In this, our seventh episode of Sailing Zoe, I add cayenne pepper to our bilge paint, take an acetone shower, visit an intriguing gas station, question of size matters, examine our two-year-old diesel, and our daughter gets famous. Welcome to Sailing Zoe. We are a family of four who bought a salvaged catamaran sailboat. We are on a mission to fix it up and sail the world. Please like, share, comment, subscribe, or join our Patreon group, and welcome aboard. The team I'm working with just got done sanding the hull, and now I was going to tape and repaint it. Oh my god. 1.75 ounces. Partway through, yeah. I was introduced to an old sailing belief that adding cayenne pepper Here to your in. bottom paint would help keep stuff from growing. Oh man. I found mixed reviews about this online, but thought I'd try it on our starboard hull. All right, let's see how this goes. Here it is, the one with the uh, cayenne pepper. Uh, you could check back in a year, I suppose, to see how it works out. I don't see any difference in it, but it's, it's there. So we'll see how it looks as it goes on. I don't see any flakes or anything different. So we'll see how it works. Eight to five all day of painting and uh, it's done now. So kind of excited about that. I really should have put on uh, the suit because this is not just regular paint. This is like poison paint to keep stuff from growing on the bottom, but it's all done. Everything's done with the exception of course of the stuff that's underneath. This is gonna get sanded and uh, painted when it's lifted in the air. This paint dries really fast. Uh, it's like, you know, 10 minutes, it, it pretty much dries. So should be able to still get two coats on. Not wanting to have this paint on me any longer than necessary, I thought I would tried to remove it with, well, acetone. Um, it's probably not good to get on your skin. Actually, let's see. So it's washed with soap and water. So, but I don't know how else to get this paint off me. The bottom paint was now finished and all the structural rebuild was, I believe, done. So it was time to bring out a marine surveyor and get the boat inspected. Although I could have done this later, I wanted to do this before anything was put back so the surveyor would have full access to examine every corner of the boat. The surveyor came in and said that everything really looked great with the exception of a little bit of delamination on the top of the deck pointed out sections of the fiberglass that needed uh, a little bit of touch up, but said the boat looked as strong or stronger than when it came out of the factory. So I'm gonna show you the sections that need to be addressed. This section here, when we were sanding through, we cut through the carbon fiber and I just totally missed that. So I'm gonna lay a, a nice piece here. A section underneath. There's a section over here and now we really should be done. And the structural soundness of this boat will be what it was um, before, before the accident. It's gonna be onto the electrical system. The previous owners removed a lot of the electric system before the insurance company took the boat. I was able to buy much of what they took back from them at a very generous offer, but now piecing together a system that still had its original wiring, wiring for an upgraded system, and boxes of random parts uh, was challenging, but it got done. Next, now that the inspection was complete, I repainted the bilge and put back the wires and plumbing I had to previously move to access all those sections that needed fixing. Here, you can see I tucked it up nice and neat again. All right, so I am in where the fuel tanks are. These are, these are the diesel tanks. If diesel sits too long, it can go bad, and you have to filter out the gunk that can grow in it, which is called polishing. Uh, which is kind of nice that it has access on every one of the tanks. <laughs> Maybe we'll just turn it. It looks really good to me. 
I think we're good to go. I'm not having to polish the tanks. I pass this store on my way to the boat every day. And being a bad speller and dyslexic for a while, I thought they were selling biscuits and prawn. But uh, no, they, they, they weren't. And then I just had to see for myself. So to answer the three questions, I'm sure you have. Uh, yes, yes. And um, yeah, they're pretty good. But <laughs> apparently they run out. So uh, in this case, you should come early because, you know, they run out. All right, got another project just uh, in process of completing. That is the old hatch cover. That is the new hatch cover. It was both easier and harder to replace than you would think. Um, it's just, a, you know, screws that are up there that just need to be taken out. But the bolts on this side are stripped and I can't, we can't get them out. Um, used a butane torch to uh, heat it up to try to expand the bolts and, and that, that wasn't working. Also used a dental toothpick to kind of scrape out the, the oxidation around the side to kind of help. I got all the bolts out on this one and I've only gotten like one to be loosened on um, on this hatch. So we're gonna have to drill out those bolts. A little awkward, but as soon as you can get the bolts out, it's not too bad of a, a replacement, uh, so far at least. Here we are on the inside and we'll see how this guy lines up. I spoke too soon. That right there, the higher black on the right, lower on the left, that is, not just how I'm holding the camera, it is tilted. So this whole thing needs to get tilted aft. So yeah, here's to a project that almost seemed okay, but now is not okay. I ended up shaving off a quarter inch of this bar to allow the latch to pass through and lock. I'm right outside of West Marine and gonna take back this uh, extra gallon of bilge paint. One of the things that's on the top of this bilge paint here, let's see if you can see it, is a tension. Use a 3 16 inch nap. This to me gets at the core of the difficulty for beginners working on boats. Is 3 16 inch nap, is nap is the thickness of a roller. And you can't find it at Home Depot or Lowe's, like a special order item. But you can find a 1 quarter inch, which is only 1 16 inch thicker. But it says in big red letters, attention. Okay, do I wait two days to get this thing ordered so I can use exactly the right thing? Is it that big of a deal? Knowing what you can do and just kind of get it right or has to be done right or there's real consequences is one of the most uh, stressful parts for me. And that's why I like working with, uh, and I'm working with this guy, John Lombardi, who's been building boats for years, uh, won awards and everything for his uh, boat building with catamarans and spe specifically carbon fiber catamarans to be able to just ask somebody like, hey, is this okay? Um, and if you don't have that person you can ask, honestly, trusting yourself to kind of know what you probably should or shouldn't do, and then having somebody go back and fix it if it's an issue, is in my experience so far, been really okay. Just moving forward with your project is so much more important than getting it exactly correct and having the project take you longer and longer. For those that watched last week's video, I eventually found those spreaders, and with the boat structurally sound, flew home to be with the family. Look what I found. <laughs> Yay! There's a golden one. Yeah, there is some more. Then Christy and I started packing up the house. I tend to think that going through a person's books is about as personal of a journey that you can take. It's like going through their aspirations. 
I met this guy, David Scott, at a uh, book signing. You know, there was a time before YouTube when people would go on these like grand adventures. They'd come back and write books about it. Now, now YouTube's come along and helped to make some of these stories more, more accessible. To watch a compilation of Clint's book musings and a list of the most helpful and not so helpful sailing books, check out our Patreon page where you can also support these videos. So what exactly is this Patreon thing and how does it support us? Well, Patreon is a web page where you can send money to artists, musicians, or YouTubers like us to support their efforts. It's like buying us a beer or two a month as a way of saying thanks for making these videos. At different levels of support, you get access to content earlier or additional content, swag, even join us for a day sale. No pressure. We just love all of you watching and genuinely enjoy sharing our lives with you. Join us next time as we continue to get the house ready to go on the market, sell our stuff, and I get really, really excited about all our first aid supplies.